Maybe the brown-haired woman had meant for those words to scare Don off, but they'd had exactly the opposite effect. After hearing a statement like that, there was no way that he could leave her alone until she explained herself, in spite of how much stronger than him she was physically. Don had very quickly introduced himself and asked for her name in exchange. She hadn't given it, though, probably concerned that if she did, he might just follow her around forever. As it turned out, though, that damage had already been done. Soon, the blonde-haired man had left Antoine's training compound looking extremely unsatisfied, and that was when the woman rushed inside the compound as if to escape from Don's questions. Don still didn't leave, though. He waited outside the door, watching for any sign that the woman might be about to re-emerge. Once or twice, he saw her pass by one of the few windows on the compound, but she didn't seem like she was in any state to be a student or learn any fighting techniques, exactly. Don continued waiting outside that compound door for nearly three hours until the woman finally emerged, and the moment she did and saw that he was still there, she started to look sick. For a few moments, Don was worried that he might be making the child sick, too, but he wasn't about to give up. If there was some kind of threat approaching the city of fighters, he wanted to know more about it. He and the woman stared at one another in silence for a few seconds, but finally she spoke to him, and there was some clear frustration in her voice at that point. You don't have much time left, you know. If you're going to leave, it has to be now. However, Don was resolute a moment later when he replied to her. I'm not leaving until I know what's going on around here. People in this town are acting really strange, and I've heard the name Grant more than once. I've heard Grant talked about like he's the apocalypse. If this is really such a big problem, and if Arn is really in that much trouble, then why haven't you called the knights? By that point, though, the woman had started to look really crestfallen. There was a sadness in her face and posture as clear as it was horrible, and at last, after another brief sigh, she replied to Don, still looking a bit worried, but less upset for some reason. All right, if you want answers, I can give you answers, but we don't have much time to talk about this. I don't like talking about it anyway, but I don't want to see you get hurt either. Just promise me that once you know the truth, you'll start thinking about your own safety, all right? Don just nodded in reply, although by that point he was barely even thinking about what the woman was asking him to do. For the next few minutes, those three moved through the city streets of Arran, passing houses that to Don seemed pretty large. Then again, he'd lived in Troma his whole life, and most of the houses that he'd seen had been small. Still, he was starting to wonder if there were any small houses in Arran. At last, however, they arrived at a house that was small even by Troma's standards. In fact, it was so small, Don thought, that it couldn't possibly have contained more than three rooms. And sure enough, that was just how many it contained. On one side of the house, there was a tiny bedroom with a table and two chairs in it. On the other side, a kitchen for preparing meals and a small bathroom as well. In addition to its small size, however, the house was also extremely old, and although it seemed to have gone through some repairs over time, those repairs had been pretty patchwork and a bit incomplete, as if they'd been done by incompetent repairmen. Don could barely even imagine what kind of person would agree to live in such a small and badly maintained shack. Still, the woman seemed to think it was a good place to talk, so she seated herself in one of the chairs next to the bedroom table, inviting Don to sit opposite her. Soon, leaning back in her seat as if struggling to get comfortable, the woman spoke to Don patiently, though she still looked very worried. Before I say anything else, you ought to know my name. The woman remarked slowly, and Don noticed, a bit nervously. It's Sylvia, and I'm Antoine's wife. You're kidding! Antoine's married? Don asked in undisguised shock. Sylvia didn't look too offended by that question, fortunately, but she did have a sort of sarcastic expression on her face when she replied to it. Yeah, last time I checked. Why, is there something wrong with that? No, Don exclaimed, hurrying to clear that up as quickly as he could. No, that's fine. It's just that he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who knows what it means to sacrifice. Uh, I mean, well... Don had always had a little trouble with blurting out the things that were on his mind, but Sylvia still didn't look offended. In fact, she smiled at that point as though she were really more amused than anything else. I know, that's the way he comes across at first, but that's just what he wants to look like to his students, because he wants to maintain discipline. He's actually sacrificed a lot to do what he thinks is right. When he was young, all he wanted was to be the greatest fighter of them all. Somebody who could defend his city from its greatest enemies single-handedly. When Antoine was twelve years old, he was already so powerful that you couldn't find one fighter out of a hundred who could beat him. But he was still humble enough to ask for help whenever he needed it. At the time, the greatest combat trainer in town was Walter, and everyone followed his instructions. Walter's students used the best fighting technique this town has ever seen, and Antoine still wanted to be the best, so he asked, politely, if he could train under the fighting master. As soon as Walter realized what Antoine was capable of, he took him on as a student, and it didn't take Antoine long to become almost the best in his compound. There was only one other student who could give Antoine a hard fight at that point. Harold. Don guessed immediately without having to hesitate for even a moment. At first, Sylvia looked a little surprised by how quickly Don had realized that, but eventually she just nodded. Harold had been Walter's student a lot longer than Antoine, Sylvia explained, and he was a lot more orthodox with his fighting technique. He was just as motivated as Antoine, and the two were rivals until they were twenty, 
Antoine tried to learn as much as he could from Walter, but he wasn't completely convinced that Walter's technique was perfect. So whenever Antoine thought that he could improve the technique he was being taught, he went for it. That was why he started integrating stealth-based combat into his fighting style, and it's the reason why he eventually decided that lighter and longer-range weapons were more effective. Antoine was always looking for loopholes in everything, questioning the way things were done, and it helped him make a few breakthroughs in technique and fighting style. In fact, that's probably the only reason why he was able to keep up with Harold. He was constantly discovering new ways to improve because that was the kind of talent he had. Harold's talent was very different. Once he'd mastered a style of combat, he could refine it further and further the more he thought about it. Harold refined Walter's technique even more than Walter and his teachers had, carrying armed combat to a whole new level. The techniques that they developed were distinctly different, but both were great warriors. Eventually, though, Walter had to pass his title on to one of them. He had to make it clear who was going to teach the next generation of warriors in his compound. And I don't think anyone was really surprised when he chose Harold, a student who'd been with him longer and followed his style much more closely. Antoine was very angry with Walter at that point, of course, because he felt as if Walter had abandoned him. Up to that point, Walter had always told Harold and Antoine that they had to learn to get along. And they both tried their best, but they disagreed about so many things and worked together so often that arguments were inevitable. Antoine thought that Harold was just being a stick in the mud, and Harold sometimes looked down on Antoine for deviating from Walter's original technique as much as he did. Of course, when Walter made his decision, things went south between those two in a hurry. They'd been rivals for years, and even uneasy friends for quite a while, but choosing one over the other was probably a mistake. The moment he heard the verdict, Antoine challenged Harold to a fight, and Harold had to accept. Maybe it would have been good for both of them if Harold had won. Antoine might have learned humility and gone back to training, and the rest of us could have talked some sense into him. I can't imagine things turning out worse than they did, though. The fight between those two lasted for hours, and it was a very close fight. But eventually, Antoine was the one who came out on top, and he insisted, at knife point, that Harold let him take the position of head trainer of Walter's school. Harold refused, of course. He said that a fight was no way to settle something that important, that people can win fights based on how energetic they feel or how much they've had to drink, instead of just how worthy they are to teach. So how did they settle it? Don asked in amazement, clearly eager to hear more. However, it didn't seem that there was much more to the story than that, because Sylvia's answer was hardly encouraging. They never did. The moment that Antoine realized he couldn't change Harold or Walter's minds, he stormed off to start his own school, and half the fighters in town wanted to practice his technique by that point. They'd seen the way he defeated Harold, and they were convinced that he really was the best fighter in town, and just wasn't being given a fair chance. He was convinced of that, too. Honestly, I think Antoine's still convinced that he's the better fighter and that Walter refused to teach him because of some prejudice or grudge. Antoine's fight with Harold didn't teach him anything except that no one was going to give him a chance, and if he ever wanted to get a fair opportunity to shine, then he had to make that opportunity for himself. Since then, he's just become more and more bitter, and so is Harold. Don was feeling a little confused by that, though. He could understand why Antoine would feel bitter about the situation, but aside from losing the fight and quite a few students, Harold shouldn't have needed to be bitter about what had happened. After thinking it over for a few moments, though, Don decided to just ask a question. Why was Harold bitter? I mean, he may have lost the fight, but he still got to teach in Walter's own compound, right? Was he really that upset that Antoine became a success? No, Sylvia replied, shaking her head just as sadly as before. Harold was never that petty, and I'm sure that he could have learned to live with Antoine's success and even supported him eventually. But only a few months after that fight, Antoine took something else from Harold. Something that he couldn't bring himself to forgive. For a few moments, Sylvia just looked down at her dress in silence, as if thinking more about the child that she was carrying. But at last, she explained the truth. Antoine took me, Don. I'm Harold's sister. <laughs>